Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Virgin Galactic readies for first commercial space flight. Russian pilot from 2019 crash sentenced to prison. Boom Supersonic CEO remains optimistic. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Virgin Galactic readies for first commercial spaceflight. Last month, Virgin Galactic claimed it had successfully completed its Unity 25 space mission, the final shakedown flight of the company's Unity spacecraft, or so they believe. This week, an announcement was made by Virgin Galactic introducing the crew of its planned June 29th Galactic 1 mission, humankind's first commercial passenger spaceflight unless you count the Blue Origin flights that have been going on for a while now. Comprising representatives of the Italian Air Force and Italy's National Research Council, the three-person crew is slated to board Virgin Spaceship Unity for a 90-minute flight, during which a number of suborbital scientific experiments are to be undertaken. The Galactic One mission will be commanded by Italian Air Force Colonel Walter Vilade, a NASA-trained astronaut qualified on International Space Station systems and Russia's Soyuz spacecraft and Orlin spacesuit. Colonel Vilade will be joined by Italian Air Force Lieutenant Colonel and Physician Angela Landolfi, who will conduct tests aboard Galactic One for purpose of measuring human cognitive performance in microgravity and investigating the mixing of specific solids and liquids in microgravity. Italy's National Research Council will be represented aboard the spacecraft by engineer Pantaleone Carlucci, who will conduct tests on microgravity's effects on human physiology. And after the break, First Flight Society to celebrate Orville Wright's birthday with free event. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. First Flight Society to celebrate Orville Wright's birthday with free event. The First Flight Society will be celebrating the 5th Annual National Aviation Day on August 19, 2023. The event will be held at Dare County Regional Airport in North Carolina, with exhibitors, aircraft displays, and food in celebration of the Wright Brothers' first flight more than a century ago. National Aviation Day is a free event for all, suitable for the whole family. This year's keynote speaker will be Larry Tice, historian, scholar, and author of Conquering the Sky. Equivu Capital launches next-gen de-icing. Private investment firm Equivu Capital Holdings announced on June 21st that it had launched NextGen de-icing, a full-service aircraft de-icing concern headed up by aviation industry veteran John Savage. By virtue of his two-plus decades in the aircraft de-icing business, Mr. Savage will ensure NextGen de-icing consistently realizes its ambition to leverage up-to-the-minute de-icing technologies and techniques. NextGen de-icing strives to ensure every aircraft it treats departs safely and without delay. Next-gen de-icing trucks can be used in single operator mode, thereby halving labor costs. Thrust Flight introduces A&P curriculum at ADS campus. Thrust Institute of Maintenance announced that it will imminently offer an airframe and power plant technician program at its facility on Texas's Addison Airport. The new program will provide aspiring aviation technicians and exceptional educational experience and opportunity to earn the FAA's Airframe and Power Plant Mechanic Certification, a standard prerequisite to the aircraft maintenance technician career. Thrust Institute of Maintenance is an affiliate of Thrust Flight, a nationally recognized flight school. EAA's Women Venture Schedule Announced The schedule for EAA Women Venture has been published for EAA Air Venture Oshkosh, celebrating three decades of female combat aviation. 
The 70th edition of the annual fly-in will once again be a gathering point for the surviving Women Air Force Service Pilots, or WASPs, of World War II. The yearly gathering of warbirds is a fine place to reminisce and inculcate a passion for aviation in the kids who turn out to take part in a range of activities and presentations. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Russian pilot from 2019 crash sentenced to prison. The Russian captain in command of a 2019 Moscow to Murmansk Aerofloat flight was sentenced to six years in prison for his actions, with courts finding him guilty of negligence. The 2019 flight was struck by lightning not long after takeoff, when Denis Evdokimov immediately began a return to Moscow. While no apparent injuries were noted following the strike, it was Evdokimov's performance and landing that appears to have sunk his chances in court. The Suhoi Superjet 100 suffered under his landing technique, making hard contact with the runway, rebounding and catching a flame as it careened out of control. Out of the jet's 78 passengers, 41 perished in the inferno. Evdokimov was charged with negligence in short order when authorities accused him of a failure to follow procedure throughout the event. Initial reports appeared to point to his defense resting upon the idea of a malfunction that precluded a safer landing, but authorities found nothing to blame but the captain himself. Evdokimov will serve six years for the incident, with a ban from aircraft operation for another three. Whether that sentence may be served concurrently remains unknown in Western circles. And after these messages, Boom Supersonic CEO remains optimistic. Unbridled passion, unequaled performance, unlimited possibilities. Hartzell Aviation, you are cleared for takeoff. Introducing Hartzell Aviation, leading general aviation companies united by the Hartzell guiding principle of built on honor. A commitment to uphold the highest standards in quality, performance, and support. Hartzell Propeller, Hartzell Engine Tech, Hartzell Aerospace Welding. We are Hartzell Aviation. Now boarding at HartzellAviation.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Welcome back. Boom Supersonic CEO remains optimistic. After losing engine partner Rolls-Royce in September 2022, Boom Technology, trade name Boom Supersonic, the Denver-based American company about the perilously speculative business of bringing to market a supersonic civilian airliner, announced in December 2022 that it will partner with three aviation companies to develop and build engines for its proposed Overture Supersonic Transport. Boom Supersonic executives disclosed their engine building plans during a ceremony at North Carolina's Piedmont Triad International Airport, ostensibly the future site of the company's aircraft manufacturing operation. Boom has pledged to create 1,760 jobs in the Guilford County, Greensboro area and invest $500 million in the project through the end of the decade. Boom founder and CEO Blake Scholl informed an audience gathered on the GSO Terminal's upper concourse that his company would team with a consortium of three lesser-known aerospace concerns to design, produce, and maintain a jet engine capable of powering an economically viable, environmentally responsible SST. Florida Turbine Technologies, a division of defense contractor Kratos Defense, will design the engine. GE Additive will provide technology consulting on additive manufacturing and 3D printing, and Arizona-based Standard Aero will maintain the engines once certified specimens take to operating a field. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.